So we were talking about graph features on quadratics, okay? So what we're doing today is we're looking at the two different forms of a quadratic. There's a vertex form and then there's a standard form, okay? And we're gonna look at how to write equations in both standard form and vertex form, okay? So we're gonna, it might be a lengthy um, lesson today, but it's a short assignment. Well, it's the typical short 10 question assignment you, we usually have, okay? All right, so let's go. So what is vertex form? Vertex form is y equals, y equals a times x minus h to the power of two plus k. That is vertex form. I don't imagine that you're gonna remember that, so I probably would write it down. Y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. This is how I write a quadratic in vertex form. This is how I write a quadratic in vertex form. So vertex form, we need to know what each of these letters would represent in vertex form. The vertex, does anybody remember what a vertex is when we're talking about a parabola? So like, let's say I graphed something like this. Does anybody remember what the vertex is? Yes, okay, so it's either the minimum or the maximum. So the vertex is either our minimum or our maximum. Here. So for this parabola in particular, the minimum would be, or the vertex would be the minimum. So this point right here represents the H and K in my vertex form. Yes. Yes, these are examples that we're about to go over. Yes. Okay. And just like Alexa was saying, the axis of symmetry splits my parabola in half. Pretend that went through exactly the middle. What we need to be able to do is look at this equation in standard form, I mean in vertex form, and you should be able to tell me what the vertex is. Now, notice it says the vertex is hk. Do you notice this minus sign here? This does not make it negative. Okay, so I need you to think of this as opposite. This says x minus h. Well, this is a positive h value plus K, this is a positive K value. So I want you to think of this middle one, the X minus H as opposite, opposite sign. Okay, so let's look at this example right here. Y equals two, X minus one to power two plus five. What letter does the two represent? A, because it's in the same format here. What does the one represent? H, and what does the five represent? Okay. Now, what is the vertex that it's giving me that is telling me that this parabola is at? Okay, so the X is positive one, and what's the Y value? Five. Mm -hmm, five, okay, so my H value is the, I'm talking about, I'm asking for the vertex. So my vertex, my H value is one and my K value is five. So the point, the maximum or the minimum here would be one at one, five. 
So A represents, so if my A is positive, and we'll learn this later, so you don't need to know it now, but if my A is positive, it tells me my parabola is facing up. If my A was negative, it would tell me it's facing down. Also, it tells me like how much it stretches or how wide it is. And if you remember on y'all's test, there were questions about like, oh, it went, it's two times as it stretched by two. Well, we haven't learned that yet. So those questions were taken out of the test, okay? Well, since this A is positive, you know that this is facing up. So the vertex would be a minimum at one five. Looking at this equation, the three represents what letter? A. What's the four represent? H. And then the six, or the negative six, K. So what is the vertex? What is this telling me the vertex is in this equation? Negative four and then negative six, okay? Perfect. Mm -hmm. So the H is the only one that you could think of as having an opposite sign. But the K, whatever it says, if it's plus K, that's positive K. If it's minus K, it's negative K. All right. Now, for my zoomies, uh, I have to actually look at the results. But for my zoomies, if you're falling asleep during this time, it's kind of pointless for you to be on here, okay? So I need you to make sure that if you can't, participate, make sure you're actually taking notes that you can look back at. Miss, I'm awake, miss. That's my, that's my Rodolfo. Let's go, miss. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay, are there any questions? The big point here on this slide is being able to identify which is the vertex. So the vertex is here at positive one, positive five, the vertex here is at negative four, negative six. So, remember, so we don't have to, um, we don't have to worry about the squared. No. Okay. Yes. Good question. It makes it negative because in the equation it says minus h. So if it's saying plus four, that means this must have been a negative four here because a negative negative would make that plus. Hmm. So remember, it's opposite. My equation says x minus h. So this does not mean that this is a negative h. x minus h is just the equation. So if it says x minus 1, like for here, that means there's a positive 1 here. But since it says plus 4, that means there must have been a negative 4, because a negative negative would have made it plus 4. All right. So looking at a graph, when I look at the vertex here, the vertex is at 3, 2. So when I put it in my equation, it'll be x minus 3, because the h is positive 3, and it'll be x um, plus 2, because the k is positive 2, because my vertex is at 3, 2. What I need you to make sure you have on your paper is the vertex form equation. Somewhere at the top, bolded, underlined, something because this is what we're going to refer to for the rest of the class. So since my vertex was at 3, 2, I plug in 3 for H and 2 for K. That simple. Okay. So we're not going to graph it because we don't have graph paper. I can't hand out graph paper and I don't feel like trying to make y'all do it on your screens right now. How However, looking at this equation, I want everyone to write down this, um, what the vertex is, or having your mind, tell me in the middle of your head what the vertex is of this equation. So just right now, everyone mentally look at this equation and think about what the vertex is. If you're on Zoom, please put it in the chat. That would also tell me if you're participating. If you're on Zoom, put it in the chat. You can private chat me, you don't have to public chat. All right, can I get a Zoom volunteer? Tell me what the vertex would be for this equation. What would the vertex be for this equation? And if you're like raising your hand or something like that, I can't see. I don't have your screens up. I'll volunteer. 
Yeah, we're Dolpho. All right, man. So uh, you got the H right there, and that's negative two. But that's just that thing is just like an opposite, so it'll be two, miss. Mm-hmm. And then you got the K, and that's one, so that'd be two one, miss. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So my vertex would be a positive two, positive one. Here would be my vertex. And based on the quick thing I told you earlier, would this be a minimum or a maximum? Like would my parabola be facing up or would it be facing down? It'd be oh. facing up, because mm -hmm, it's A is positive. So I'm not gonna draw it out really, but it'd just be something, look something like that, but not really, okay? All right. Ms. Patterson? Yes, Jada. So, um. Why are the letters like H and K instead of Y and X? Because it can't, so if you look back at the actual equation, good question, Y equals A, X minus H squared plus K. If I have H and K as X and Y, there's already an X and Y. So it would look kind of, it would look like this, A, X minus X squared plus Y. And that doesn't really, that doesn't make any sense right there. So they represent the vertex in a different variable so that you under, so you can actually have an equation. So if it was okay. x minus x, it would be nothing there. So yeah, good question. All right, looking at this one, everyone get an idea in your head what the vertex is? Everyone get an idea in your head what the vertex is? All right, can I get another Zoomie to tell me? Oh, LOL. Well. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Robert. Okay, so the, um, the H is negative two and then the K is uh, positive seven. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So my thing would be over here at negative two, seven would be my vertex. And would this be facing down or would this be facing up? It'd be facing down because this is a negative A. So it would look something like this, but this is very inaccurate, okay? But it'd be facing down. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna read through some verbal expressions and, sorry, I'm just looking through stuff, okay. We're gonna read through some verbal expressions and we're gonna write the equation. So this is gonna take some time and I'm gonna give you, and it's not gonna be me talking, it's gonna be you working, okay? So let's read this through, okay? Write a quadratic function in vertex form, pause. What I think a lot of y'all did on the test was y'all just like skimmed through it really fast. And I know because you had the hour and 30 minutes, okay? But we first, when I, when I read that, the first thing I'm gonna do is write out the vertex form equation. Cause it says in vertex form. So I'm gonna write out what vertex form is for a quadratic. That can be represented by the graph that has a vertex at three negative seven. Which letters represent a vertex? H and K. So the three is H. No, and the negative seven is K. Okay, so I'm labeling as I'm reading. I haven't even read the whole problem. So it says my vertex is at three negative seven. So the H is three, the K is negative seven, and it passes through the point one negative 10. If it passes through a point, what is that? What are the letters would re the point represent? What variables? A. X and Y. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, now that we have this labeled, what could we do with these numbers in this equation? Plug them in. Plug it in. Absolutely. <laughs> so, huh? What is? Okay. Are you sure? Okay, so if the y value is negative 10, I'm gonna plug that in for y. So negative 10, this is where I really need to focus. This is the hardest part of today. Negative 10 equals, I don't know my a value, a parenthesis, the x value that we labeled is one. The h value that we labeled is three. So it'd be one minus three squared. And then the K value that we labeled is negative seven, so minus seven. 
what do we not have in this equation? The A. And so that is what we need to solve for. Because this is not an equation right here. This, is, this, is, this won't graph anything for us. Okay? So we need to solve for A so we can get our graph. Well, how do I solve for A? You put a line down. Okay, cool. I'll put the line down it. Um, I wouldn't. Minus seven. Well, minus seven. Okay, so do something with the minus seven. Okay, how would I get rid of the minus seven? Add seven. Add seven. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to add seven to both sides because it's minus seven. So I'm going to add seven to both sides. So negative 10 plus seven will give me negative three equals a times one minus three squared. So this is kind of ugly to me and I want to kind of simplify this down. Could I just do what one minus three is? Yeah, let me just do that because I, I don't like the parentheses. So negative three equals a times one minus three is negative two, so negative two squared. Not yet, because I don't like the squared either. Can I just do what negative two squared is? Yeah, so what is negative two squared? Negative two times negative two is positive four. So that gives me negative three equals A times positive four. And then divide. Perfect, then I'm divide both sides by four. I'm going to just go ahead and put this in the decimal. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. So negative 3 divided by negative 4 is negative 0.75. So A equals negative 0.75. Miss <sighs> Patterson. Jaden. Could you go a little slower? Absolutely. I'm not done, though. But yes, I'll go a little slower. Okay. Yeah, don't worry. We have like 500 examples. It's okay. So this is my A value. Well, let's just talk about what's this A value tell me about my parabola? It's going to be facing down. Okay, and this is what I want us to start recognizing. We look at the equation, we notice certain values, and we're like, okay, I know this. Good morning. I know this about my parabola. For me? Well, <laughs> this student in person or on your Zoom right now? No. Nope. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, now I'm going to write my equation. So I have my A value. I don't fill in the Y and the X. I just fill in the A, H, and K. So my equation would be Y equals negative 0.75, because that's the A value. Parenthesis, I don't fill in the X anymore. We just filled in the X so we could get the A value. So X. My H value was positive three, so X minus three squared. And my K value was negative seven, so minus seven. Here is my vertex form equation based on these two things it gave me. Mm -hmm. So all I did here is now that we found the A value, I'm filling in my equation. So the A value was negative 0.75. I don't fill in the X and the Y. My H value was positive three, so it'd be X minus three squared. And my K value was negative seven, so that's why it says minus seven. So our goal here was to get our equation in vertex form. Questions? I know I'm going to do it again, so don't freak out if you didn't get it the first time. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, you don't need to write this down, by the way. You can just write down the information like this stuff. So if you feel like you got it, I want you to try to see if you can get the vertex form equation. Write a quadratic form function in vertex form. So this is the, I'm going to do it slowly again, or I'm going to do it slower. So it'll be y equals a x minus h squared plus k. We want the vertex form quadratic equation. 
that can be represented by the graph that has a vertex at three, five. Vertex, I know vertex is the H and K. So three would represent my H, five would represent my K. The graph has a vertex. So vertex is my H and K values in the vertex form equation. So I know that three represents the H and five represents the K. And it passes through the point, a point. Any point on a graph is an X and a Y value. So if the point is at 513, the five would represent X and the 13 would represent Y. So before I even started any work, I started labeling values. Again, if you feel like you got it, try to go ahead of me. And if you don't have it and I'm going too fast again, please let me know. Thirteen minus negative five is what? Yes. All right. So I'm going to plug these values in. The y value is thirteen. We're looking for a, so we're going to leave that as a. The x value is five. My H value is positive three, so it'd be five minus three squared. And then my K value is positive five, so it'd be plus five. So if you went ahead of me, make sure you have it set up correctly. So if you did not start it like this, make sure you have all the right positive and negative values, then you need to rewind a little bit. Jaden, am I going at a good speed? Oh, yes. Okay, cool. Okay, so here, we're gonna put the line down the middle like Noah told us earlier, and we'll go ahead and get rid of this positive five. How do I get rid of this positive five? Subtract. Subtract five. So 13 minus five. Hmm. Hmm, sorry, eight. <laughs> equals a times five minus three squared. Pause. So the reason I got rid of the five is because I'm solving for a, so I'm trying to get rid of everything on this side other than a. Okay, then I can just go ahead and simplify this stuff that's in the parentheses. Five minus three will give me two, so eight equals a times two squared. Yay. It's okay. Two squared, I'm gonna go ahead and just figure that out as well. Two squared is four, so this would be eight equals a times four. And I don't, I want a, a is multiplied to four, so I have to divide both sides by four. That would give me two equals a. For the people who went ahead, did y'all get two equals a? Yeah. Good job. So since I know a equals, I mean, yeah, a equals two, I'm gonna use, write my equation now. So y equals two times x minus three squared plus five. Because my a value is two, my h value is positive three, but it's opposite, and my k value is positive five. So that's why it says plus five. Let's go. I got it. Of what? I put a two instead of the, the, the three. Oh, okay. All right. Ask me questions, please. Jaden, did that make more sense? Now I went a little slower. No, I'm good. Okay. All right. So you are not doing all of these, so do not freak out. What time is it? Yeah. Do not freak out. Okay, all I want you to do is one of them, and let's just all do the same one. So does everyone just wanna do number one? Yes, we'll just all do number one, okay? So do not do all five of these, please. Do not do all five of these, sucks, will suck for you. Just do the first one, please. And let's see if we all get the same answer. So I'm gonna give you uh, four minutes. I think that's mm -hmm. a good amount of time.
Um, did I give enough time? No. Okay. Yes, Noah? Okay. Okay. Tell me what, tell me your, everything you initially wrote out. Four what? Sorry. Four minus three. Okay, that's why it'd be four plus three. Oh. I know, but wait. Oh wait, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did four plus three. Uh huh. And uh, fifteen squared plus two. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And then I. Um, why do you think you did something wrong? Because it's a decimal. Yeah, because when I got down to the bottom, mm -hmm. when you divide, it's five divided by forty-nine. Okay, just leave it at five over forty nine then. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're gonna get weird decimal on this. I couldn't, okay. I couldn't make them where they're all like perfect numbers. So. Okay. I was just like really confused. I was like, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna do what Noah and Alexa told me already. Okay, the vertex is at negative three two, so this is my h and k. The point is at four seven x y. So they told me seven equals a. The x value is four, so four. The h value is negative three, so minus negative three would be plus three squared and then plus two because the k is positive two. So when I'm solving this, what do I do first? All right, subtract two from both sides. That would give me five equals a four plus three squared. And then what? Four plus three, perfect. So that'll give me eight, five equals a yeah. times seven squared. Then what? Uh, five Five equals a times forty nine. Yes, and then what? Yes, divide both sides by forty nine, and I'm just going to leave that as a fraction. Five over forty nine, because I don't know what that is as a decimal. Yeah, something, some irrational number probably. So, not irrational, but just some long decimal number. So five over forty nine. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So my equation would be y equals five over forty nine times x plus three squared plus two. Great job! Okay, we are not doing the rest of these. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, the last one. Is there yeah. more to this or do we have like the basics down? Well, you have the basics down. We're only doing the bare minimum today. Next class will get a little bit more advancey, but right now we're just laying the bare bottom down. Okay, the next thing, which will only take us about a couple of minutes because we've already done this, you just didn't know what we were doing, is vertex form to standard form. So what if I gave it to you in vertex form and asked you to transfer it into the, the, the standard form? <laughs> so vertex form, we already what we already talked about is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. When we had a problem like this, and I asked you to simplify it, y equals 5 times x minus 2 squared minus 10. Does anybody remember what we did to simplify this? Like if I wanted to get rid of the squared and the parentheses and combine like terms? <laughs> we've already done we've already done this and we've done this like 500 times but you just didn't know what we were doing if i ask you to simplify this does anyone remember how if i wanted to simplify this down Um, I think, are you drawing, what are you drawing? I'm doing the, isn't the opposite? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I know you're talking about, no, 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 we're not going to do that. Okay, so when I want to simplify this, this means I want to get rid of the squared, I want to get rid of the parentheses, so I'm reading this to myself, five times x minus two squared minus ten, pen dots. Yeah, I want to simplify this, pen dots. 
Well, I can't do anything in the parentheses. X minus two doesn't do anything. So our next is the exponent. X minus two squared. X minus two squared. Anyone? Anyone? No? X minus two squared. What does X minus two is being squared mean? Like before we even talk about what does it mean? X minus two squared. Yeah, so what is something, is something being raised to the power of two, what does that mean about that something? Like three squared, what does that mean? It's being multiplied by itself. Multiplied by itself. So x minus two squared. It just be x. Oh, it's still recording! It's just being a little oh, less. Miss, where did you go? Um, through a black hole. Then I came back. All right. I don't know what the last thing y'all heard is. Who left? Aaliyah? Oh. All right. So x minus 2 squared is x minus 2 times itself, right? So x minus 2 times x minus 2, I have to use the box method. Please tell me this is looking familiar. Yes. Yeah. I have to use the box method. I need to do x minus 2 times itself, x minus 2. So what is x times x? x squared. X squared. Negative 2 times x? Uh, negative, 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 negative 2x oh and then negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So this is y equals 5 times. Yep. And then I'm going to put what I have here, what x minus 2 squared is 5 times x squared. Combine like terms, negative 2x and negative 2x will give me negative 4x plus 4 minus 10. So all I've done here is just do x minus 2 squared. And x minus 2 squared is x squared minus 4x plus 4. Anyone from here take it over? I'm ho I was hoping somebody could from here keep going for me. You got confused. So what I'm all I'm trying to do right now is simplify this down. Yes, thank you. I would distribute. So I'm going to distribute this five. Is that what you were saying? Over and over again. <laughs> you know, you're actually distributing. Yeah. So five times x squared would give me five x squared. 5 times negative 4x will give me negative 20x. 5 times 4 is positive 20 minus 10. Am I done simplifying? OK, and so what are my like terms? Uh, 20x <laughs> Plus 20 and negative 10. These are my like terms. Remember, like terms have to have the same variable with the same power. So positive 20 minus 10 is positive 10. So y equals 5x squared minus 20x plus 10. I have just went from vertex form to standard form. 5 is my a, negative 20 is my b, 10 is my c. So there's the standard form equation. So we have already done this. We've done this so many different times. I can't even count on my hands how many times we've done it. Okay. So this really was not new. No, I can't. Okay. What? Boy. Are we going to do the next one? Yes, we're going to do this last one. You're going to do it on your own. Put this from vertex to standard. This is the last one we're doing. Go from vertex to standard, please. So the same thing we just did. Try it on your own. Look at all the steps we did in the previous one. And try to do it on your own. So we want to go from vertex form to standard form. What color do you want to do what? Green and orange? Yeah. No, not Baylor. Not Baylor. 
Green and orange? I don't know. Isn't that like Florida gators or something? <laughs> green and orange? I don't know. Baylor's like green and white. Um, and gold. Oh, it's uh, a monument. I don't know why. I knew it Oh, it's green, yellow. That's why I got bigger. Yeah, okay. Huh? Did someone say something? Sorry, ask me again. Say it again. Negative four plus negative four. Negative four plus negative four is negative eight. Thank you. So then who's the negative eight on here? <laughs> if it's negative eight plus negative eight. Are you in the x plus four times x plus four? Well, there should be no negatives at all then. Because they're all everything is positive there. Ooh, oh, you gotta do the opposite. Mm-mm. So, no negatives? No. Uh -uh. That's just multiplying. All you're doing is multiplying. Eight. Right. Are you talking about the four and the four? Yeah. Well, that'd be multiplying. Four times four is 16. Oh, wow. But you have, <laughs> you have 4x and you have 4x, which will give you 8x. Okay, so your first step, so every, I'm not trying to go past anyone, I'm trying to stay behind you, but your first step should have been multiplying x plus 4 times x plus 4, because it's x plus 4 squared, so it's x plus 4 times itself. This is multiplying, so x times x is x squared, 4 times x is 4x, 4 times x is 4x, 4 times 4 is 16, so that equals x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus 2. So keep going. I should be behind you. I should not be in front of you. One thing I desire only what? OMG. Oh my god. Once like once like May, the second week of May hits, I ain't gonna be seeing y'all because it's like all all of it is just testing, 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 testing. Is it junior junior or like Mm-hmm. Is this I think so. I think it's this week. Miss when start? Uh, for y'all, May 11th. And when's the AOCs? Our EOC is May 11th for algebra. I don't know the other ones. I have to look at the schedule. All right, so from here, oh, right. negative 2. Yes. So that would give me negative 2x squared minus 16x minus 32 plus 2. Can you start the... Yes, absolutely. And then from here, what did y'all do? 
What are the like terms? Negative what? 32 and 2. Yes, and so negative 32 plus 2 would be negative 30. LOL. I believe you. So this is going from vertex form to standard form. Okay, so we learned a lot today, but it was basically all of it was solving. So like every class, we're going to do the Canvas assignment. I'm going to pull it up. We can either do it together or you can do it by yourself, but I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Okay. Bless you. Bless you.